That's it. Uh, hello, and welcome to the IPFS in Web Browsers and GUI Team Weekly Sync Call. Uh, our guest starring David Diaz, um, the dancing, <laughs> the dancing team lead. Um, so today, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, a fun-packed agenda. Not least because the GUI team are mostly all set together in Porto. It's very exciting. Um, let me share my screen, and we'll get on with the show. Da -da -da. What did that even mean? Um, uh, okay, uh, can someone volunteer to take notes? Is that David Diaz volunteering? Thanks, David. It's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, it's very kind of you. I'll just put your name here. Uh, um, can someone volunteer to watch David Diaz, make sure he takes good notes, because his mind tends to wander. He's very busy. Uh, okay, so now is your opportunity to add things to the agenda, if you haven't done so already. Um, in the meantime, while you're thinking about your agenda points, we are going to go and do a round of what I'd done last week, what I'm going to be doing next week. It's the best. Um, as is customary, Lidl is the most organized amongst us, which causes him the great honor of going first. Lidl, how was your last week? Any highlights for us? Uh, yes. Let me... Oh, okay. Let me share. Uh, my update is that we've landed another beta of IPFS Companion with some fixes, mostly fixes and improvements, and updates of libraries. So it would be very helpful if uh, you are using beta channel to try it out, especially play with web UI, uh, play with window IPFS uh, interface, check if, you have your, if your apps work fine with it and report any issues. Uh, so far, no red flags and I plan to release it by the end of this week. Uh, hopefully we, we will coordinate with web UI and JS IPFS Maybe we'll have another beta and switch to the new version. We'll see. Or maybe we'll play it safe. Um, and uh, 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 uh. that's mostly it. Uh, there is another small demo I wanted to show you. So the small demo is on this screen. And it's a PR, not yet merged to companion, but basically uh, JSIPFS uh, progressed so nicely. So right now I don't have any node running uh, on my machine. Uh, but if I switch to uh, embedded JS uh, IPFS node running in memory in the web extension browser context, it will shortly uh, connect to uh, some bootstrap nodes in a few seconds. And you can see there's open web UI option. And if you open it, you can see that JS IPFS node is accessed over IPFS companion API. Uh, so basically you can use it uh, just like any other and very, very nice setting screen for in-memory node uh, makes it much more e easy to uh, experiment and tweak. Uh, so that will probably land when, yeah, uh, it will land when uh, JSAPFS uh, 0.34 lands later this week or, or next week. And everyone will be able to uh, make a better use of uh, internal JSAPFS node. And that's all on my end. Uh, on the next week, I will be probably f focusing on shipping this to a stable channel. And I also want to do some spelunking into the Chromium-based Brave build, because uh, we may be able to get access to more powerful APIs by like uh, whitelisting our uh, extension ID. Um, so that's, that's all in mind. Super cool. Any super quick questions for Martin? No, then good, save him for Saving for afters, and I will go next. Let me share my screen. Share that guy. Um, the 
most interesting thing to demo is uh, unfortunately there was a nasty bug in WebUI that basically meant in Firefox, no, in Chrome and Firefox, we we were flip flopping around not being able to add files by dragging and dropping uh, on the WebUI, which is obviously terrible because that's one of its key flows. Uh, and the problem is around a guard condition that we've got in the code base that is checking for, uh, we occasionally get truncated responses back from GoIPFS uh, via the HTTP API when adding directories. Sometimes there are fewer entries in the response than expected. Um, this is an old bug, still needs to be fixed. Um, but in the meantime, we had a guard condition that dealt with it, but then when we changed the HTTP API, uh, things, things had shifted, we broke file upload. It was a bit of a deep dive into the code base to try and figure out a solution that would work for all the cases because you can either upload a batch of files from a file input or you can upload directory via a file input or you can upload a batch of files by dropping them or you can upload a directory by dropping it and they're all different code paths and different. Uh, the directory drag and drop in the web platform, uh, the APIs for that are still basically not officially spec'd and each platform has slightly differing interpretations of that. So we had a sort of shift in the um, APIs and we had a shift in the way that Firefox and Chrome interpreted the dot WebKit relative path property that it appended to file entries when drag and drops. But the good news is nowadays, da, 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 you should be able to start an IPFS daemon one of those, one of these, Shazam, it's connected, files. Um, let's find something that I haven't uploaded. Okay, who are you? New desktop output. So I've got like a directory with structure and pictures and text in it, and I'm gonna drop it on my files, and bam, it's working again. So that's good. Because uh, that is a key feature, and just to show there's nothing up my sleeve, I'm going to drop some text files on here as well, and they work too. So that was the key, like uh, file drops worked, but directories didn't, then we fixed that, and then directory drops worked and files didn't. Um, the key thing is now that we just have a small tested library that counts the number of directories we expect the IPFS response to have created for us, so it just looks at all the paths finds all the unique directories that IPFS will have to create to make that folder structure exist so that when it checks to make sure the response hasn't been truncated, it gets the right answer. Um, and there's a PR for that linked in the notes. Other exciting things. Oh, there's a quick question from David Deere. Uh, um, I just um, wondered, like, is there a way to tell how much space am I taking from my browser quota? Um, is there a way, so, uh, oh, resuming share, resuming share. Um, the question is kind of, can I see stats on repo space and? Yeah, or even just like, like different machines will get different browser quotas, right? Like. Uh, oh, I see. And so, like the user should be able to tell, oh, I cannot like add this gigabyte of file because my browser is giving me like 300 megs to play with. Mm -hmm. Um, no, not currently. That's a good idea. I, that's kind of related to using an embedded JS IPFS. The, yeah. you're, you're talking about literally like adding the file to my local one. So that the, the, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, no, that, that is something that we definitely need to do more work on. Um, this work is very much all focused around like the traditional web UI use case, which is like sending over HTTP to an external node. And as Lytle demoed, like talking directly to an embedded JS IPFS is, New, 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 new experimental mode. Got, got it. And so, okay, so if I'm understanding correctly, what you're saying is that there is those browser APIs to check how much quota we have, like how much file space we can take. Mm -hmm. uh, just like the case that we haven't used it yet, because again, like it, the, the JS IP fast event mode is very bleeding edge, but mm -hmm. it, at least it's something that we can provide to the user at some point. That's cool. Absolutely, yeah. And related, like, we, yeah. Being able to find out whether you can, like, We'll, we can ask IPFS, even if you're running an external one, we can sort of get information around where your GC limit is for, like, will this drag and drop take you over your GC limit? Like, extra, extra information, that would kind of be like, more advanced, but it's still interesting to know if you're about to drop a big data set. 
<laughs> what else is going on? So there's a, an OPFS GUI team day. We're all in Porto. We spent the morning just re going over like what we tried to, a lot of the talk has been around objectives and key results and roadmaps. And what we tried to do this morning was like, get it back to like, what are the things that excite us? Like why, what's been lost, what's gone missing over the last few months where we're just like fixing bugs and web UI is getting to a point where it's stable. So we've made a document that's like things that excite us and things that we really think that we should be focusing on because they interest us and we think they're gonna be most interesting to the community. Um, and we've also got a list of like healthy habits and things that we wanna make sure that we do more of and things that we wanna reframe going forward. Uh, but I've got an agenda point for that, so I'll dig into that more of it later. Um, one of my OKRs or Go Teams OKRs for this quarter has been around pairing with other other teammates. So I've been pairing with Terry on uh, the mobile nav for uh, Project School, which um, I won't go into any further because maybe she wants to talk about that. Uh, I've paired with Portia around uh, like Tachyon CSS issues with a, a, a website to list out some dApps. Uh, been working with Chris Waring. He's booting up to join the GUI team, so that's very exciting and been talking to candidates for the uh, IDFS package managers uh, endeavor and the visual design lead sort of like helping us make a coherent visual design process across all of our projects. Um, all of that kind of thing. Oh, and someone for the in-web browser stuff that uh, Lyle and I were working with. Um, and for privacy reasons, I'm not gonna name any names, but like there's movement there, like we're finding really great people to work with. Um, next for me is I've got an open PR for adding opt-in self-hosted analytics, which is looking great. I, my next steps for that are actually just around talking to Erin and infrastructure around how we want to host, if we're going to self-host uh, and we're going to get lots of information pouring into this database for generating our analytics, then uh, I'm going to have a conversation with her about how best to arrange that. Uh, okay, uh, I'll come back to that. And what else are I gonna do? I'm gonna release, I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna make sure that we get desktop released with the certificate for macOS. That was supposed to happen last week, but I just didn't get time. Um, but we have everything we need. It's just, just time to work it into the build process. And I'm gonna refine the OKRs on the roadmap based on the work that we've done today and based on all the feedback that I've had over the last few weeks from everyone. Um, so I'll be doing that before the end of the week. And that is all from me. Alan Shaw, would you like to go next? Or has anyone got any questions they want to add? I think David put something in the chat that we have a, oh, Martin said, we have a plan to create a widget for repo storage information. Um, so like, how, how big is your repo now versus what is your storage limit versus are you like over or under that threshold and automatically uh, let the user request the GC explicitly from the UI as well. Um, I see no burning questions, so. Alan Shaw, would you care to go next? Unmute yourself and give us your finest words. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, hi. Um, oh, let me try and do this. I've, sorry, I've got a new screen and like I just don't know what's going on anymore. Uh, share screen. Here we go. That one, share. Is it good? Yeah, your garish wallpaper is really helping. Cool. <laughs> what do you mean garish? I meant gorgeous. Good. Uh, okay, so really quickly, I was on holiday last week, so I've been um, basically catching up with stuff uh, Monday to Wednesday. Uh, I have done some things, uh, things you should know about the IPLD in memory utility that it used to export is going away. Um, it's this basically created an instance of IPLD that used the JS IPFS repo that is only based in memory. So you could uh, use it as a throwaway thing or in tests or whatever, um, but it's going away. Uh, so if you're using it, then use the IPLD in memory module instead. It does exactly the same thing, so you don't have to worry about it. 
Uh, and then the rest of the time uh, this week, I've been working on trying to get 0.34 release out the door. It's very nearly done. I've just been working through the examples today. It has broke most of them, <laughs> uh, annoyingly, and not because of the breaking API changes. It seems that like something in Webpack broke or changed, which has caused a lot of weirdness. Um, so I've basically been updating Webpack all day, which has been super dull. Uh, but it's nearly done. I'm, I have like, I think four more, uh, examples to do, but then, um, but then it's sort of good to go. Um, I released a uh, re release candidate, uh, yesterday, um, and things are looking good. Interop tests are, um, they are, so they're passing, but occasionally libphp is like doing stalls and uh, it has a couple of bugs, I think in there, but, um, I'm going to get this. 0.34 out the door and hope that the P2P gets bug fixed as soon as possible um, because this has been going on forever. Um, so yeah, that's that's my plan. I'm hoping that it'll, I'll be ready to go tomorrow. Um, and yeah, I've been merging in your pull requests for updated web UI. Thank you for those. Um, uh, and yeah, that's what I've done. I, uh, next next up is, like I said, release JS IPFS 0.34. Um, I've got some OKR finalizing to do, and I need to catch up properly with the benchmarking stuff. I've just had a really great call with Ron from Nearform uh, on the benchmarking stuff, just showing us how to write tests and um, for different JS IPFS benchmarks. We've got a new like dashboard, um, and it's shaping up to be really cool. Um, and Hugo is currently trying to plug it into our CI so that we like we can track our performance in master uh, as well as in PRs and stuff so um, it's super good news and really exciting and once we've got it sort of ironed out and are ready to go I'll make a big show and dance about it uh, and and you can all have a look and stuff um, but yeah you are welcome to check it out it's at benchmarks.ipfs.team I think um, yeah anyway uh, so then God, it's Wednesday already, so I'm not sure if I'll definitely get a chance to do this, but um, the groundwork has been done for CID uh, base 32 version one. You can now get uh, you can now get a version one CID if you put in a version zero and vice versa. So that's good. Um, but now we need to do the do the switch uh, and change it to uh, giving us back a version one base 32 CID by default. Um, uh, and yeah, I was hoping to start a little bit of work on that, see what, see where I'm going to need to change, what I'm going to need to change, and what that could, um, what, what problems that could cause and, and whatnot. Um, cool, that's me. Um, any questions for me? Uh, just on a related point to the um, the Grafana dashboard for the JSIPFS benchmarking stats, uh, I'm sat also next to Hugo, Mr. Diaz, and. I am picking his brains about how we might actually do the uh, opt-in client-side web usage analytics as something that we could import into Grafana dashboards as well. So you can start to sort of see, you know, see the whole IPFS metrics universe in one place. That would be super cool. Yeah, Grafana dashboards seem to be really easy to kind of set up and use and uh, and really useful. So yeah, I'm pretty impressed so far. I've never, I've never heard of it before, but um, yeah. It's very cool. The benchmark stuff looks very cool too. Maybe Hugo will tell us more about it soon. But uh, if there isn't any burning questions for Alan Shaw, we should move on. Okay, next up, uh, Hack, can you go next? Yep. Hi, everyone. I'm sharing my screen now. So in the last week, I've had an exam, which is not really interesting. It's important to mention we have a, we have a new translation for IPFS desktop. It's a Chin simplified Chinese, I think. I fixed a bug on WebUI related to IPv6 URLs, with where the IP is weren't inside the square brackets. And the most interesting part is the what I'm working on now. It's the context menu on Windows for IPFS desktop. As you can see, I'm running desktop. Now, if you like, right-click on a file, you click at IPFS. Please ignore this window and the time it is taking right now. And yay, it was added. 
the root of your MFS thingy. Woo! Uh, it doesn't work with directors yet, but it will soon. In the next hour, I promise. <laughs> Basically, that's it. I'm going to work on this. I will need some help for macOS and Linux because I don't know how this will work on macOS and in uh, Linux. And yep, that's it for this week. Uh, Enrique keeps telling us that it's like context menu stuff is working, and then it's like, oh, but you have to do it for OS X. It's like, oh, I see, I see. Um, any questions? All right. Um, next up, it is Hugo. Fancy Mr. Diaz. Hey guys, Let me just share the screen. Okay, so I did uh, a pull request on multi hashing sync to for remove callbacks, and it's all promises now. It should be useful for the sync iterators work. I also did a sync with uh, Alex from your forum about the um, CI stuff. And as Alan mentioned, I'm trying to integrate everything into our CI prototypes. Um, and um, with that, I did um, uh, an update to the prototypes itself. It, uh, basically, I merged everything into a single P uh, PR, so it's easier to iterate on both uh, because uh, everything is, uh, is aside from the actual uh, YAML configuration, everything is the same. So it's it's easier to iterate a bit on on those. Uh, I can show you uh, a little bit. Uh, so. The GitLab CI is uh, everything is passing aside from Windows. Don't know why. Some time out. Uh, it's always different, so it's kind of hard to make it work. But still, this is running inside a, a Mac uh, laptop inside a Vagrant uh, uh, machine, so it's probably not the best of. <laughs> the scenarios to run it so, uh, so yeah the browser tests were failing um, right now it, it was because of the um, preload stuff uh, I needed to disable uh, browser security stuff so we can do course requests and Firefox is still failing because of uh, some weird issue that happens only in the CI Locally, if I run the test inside the same Docker image, it, it runs perfectly. On the CI, it fails. So some issues still remain. On Travis, uh, basically the same thing, Windows fails. Oh, uh, here Windows fails because uh, Travis has, has this um, great option to delete all the caches, but uh, you can click it as many times as you want, but does nothing at all. <laughs> uh, so that's why uh, these wheels are failing. So yeah, that's the situation right now. I can show you also the, the dashboard for uh, the near form benchmarks integrations. Um, with this dashboard, we can, at the end, the last job of the pipeline, uh, it will probably be the benchmarks job and it will trigger a run. The, the, uh, the trigger is just making a, an HTTP request and it will output an URL. The URL would be something like this. Let's suppose this is the IPFS uh, master uh, SHA and this is the um, pull request SHA. And we can, inside the, the CI, we have both of them so we can build this URL and we can output it. Or in some way, uh, create a comment on the PR using the GitHub um, API. Um, but the main thing is we can create this URL and we can uh, output it and uh, anyone who wants to check out 
how the benchmarks uh, compare to uh, like the PR benchmarks and the browser, uh, the master benchmarks compared to one another, they can. So that would be uh, cool to have inside the CI. Uh, next, yeah, I'm continuing with the uh, bundle size PRs. Mplex and Switch are killing me completely. I'm almost giving up on that thing. Uh, Switch, it's uh, it's really complicated now with the, the state machine, really hard to navigate the code. The stack uh, is like a hundred lines long. It's really hard to understand what's going on. Uh, and it's all events. It's like backbone all over again. <laughs> so it's it's really complicated. I'm hoping to have this figured out with the Jacob's help uh, uh, by the end of the week, but I, I don't know because they are on the, the team week. Uh, they don't have much time to help me out, but let's see. So next, I will try to finish the disintegration of the CI prototypes, uh, the bundle size PRs, hopefully. <clears throat> and I was also uh, wanted to finish uh, a prototype for a new browser data store without label uh, JS that I already have like a prototype from like five months ago. I would like to finish that uh, and see if we can make it the default one because uh, from my uh, previously benchmarks, it's um, actually faster and simpler to, to use. Anyone has any questions? No questions. Okay. Um, I think I jumbled up the order a little bit, but uh, switching back to Diogo, how are you doing? What up? Uh, I'm gonna share my screen when you go drop it. You go. All right, can you guys see it? Yeah, you should be able to. So, uh, last week, what did I do? Yeah, I took some time uh, trying to fix the get folders and files. Basically, Oli talked about this. Uh, I took some time trying to figure out, but I, I have um, asked Oli for help and he took the lead. Then I basically were around the context menu. I'm going to show uh, what was supposed to do. So basically, someone raised an issue that would be cool to open the context menu. So just for your information, this is the context menu. It would be cool to just right click a file and open it. So that's then. This I know this seems uh, pretty basic, but it, I had to do uh, a big refactor to the code because the logic what this was like a standalone component, but I had to decouple everything so I can basically um, be able to open this uh, right here. Another thing we we made was in the file preview mode, you are unable to make any kind of operations. But right now we can, basically we have the same options as we have in the file browser. So we can just delete, rename, unload, inspect, whatever. Whatever we want in the, in the file preview. Uh, I think that's basically it. Yes. Yeah, I also released uh, this morning a new version of the web UI because the, the version before I released had a regression. Uh, it was that I basically made the we had add folders to work, but I broke the admin files. But now all we took care of that, and this version has already been released. For the next week, I'm going to push for the, the next release. We have an issue with uh, some topics. Some of them are already, I have to check them, because I already fixed them. But yeah, I'm, I'm working on this. And probably if uh, Enrique wants help, doing the integration in macOS of the uh, menu, I can help with that too. Any questions? Super good. Um, no questions. So, Terry Chapon, care to share? So, it is just sure. So, let's, let's assume, let's download everything and get started. Okay. Uh, my update, sorry. I cannot drag my screen from here.
No. Okay, well, I won't show you anything. So, uh, my big project <laughs> lately has been getting Proto School out the door. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, that launched yeah, that, that on Monday it, officially yeah, so with my now like more froggy and less mousy voice, which was kind enough to come back for me a little bit. Um, there, uh, Zach helped me put together a video of just the kind of presentation part of that that's quite reusable, which I put up on the I IPFS YouTube channel since we don't really want to associate Proto School with Protocol Lab specifically. Um, so the link is in the notes there. I could, I don't know if it's the team that we best equipped to help, but I am confused and Ollie already tried to help in this issue, but I honestly don't have enough knowledge to understand the answer. There's um, a problem in Proto School where once you submit a solution, there's a view in IPLD Explorer link. I don't know yet if it's all of the links or just this particular CID or whatever that's not working, but when it goes to IPLD Explorer, it just spins, it doesn't produce anything. I don't understand IPLD Explorer enough to solve that on my own. So if anyone would like to volunteer to talk me through some of the basic concepts about what's happening there, that would be really helpful. Um, wow. And then, Polly. At, at the risk of being the over eager volunteer for all the things. Um, no, I'm, I'm happy I am the, to have. I'm the most in the firing line for I okay. got the Explorer cool. not working. Okay, sounds good. Uh, thank you. And stuff that's coming up that's most relevant to this team is Michael has built, I haven't proofed it yet, but he claims to have built uh, the functionality that will make ProtoSchool work with files, like make you be able to upload files and then move them around there. And that is the underpinning for me being able to build a lesson on the file API, which I think will be more compelling to the world than the DAG API, because it's more kind of real world use case. Um, as that's not going to be super immediate, but as I get into it, I'm sure I'll be coming back and looking at the resources you guys have already put together to try to teach myself about it first and then figure out what the, what the formatting is. So um, I'll keep you guys posted on that as I go. And if anybody has any suggestions, let me know. Uh, I'm not looking at the thing right now. Did I write anything else? No. We'll just pretend those are my updates then. Questions? You're on mute, Molly. I'm on mute, luckily. I got someone to elbow me. Thanks, Diogo. Um, uh, Hugo shared some cool information. Martin, everyone, Hugo, okay, that's okay, that's all right. I thought just quickly it, you had some screen problems, so I thought I would share the, the little bit of work that we just did. Um, oh, that's what I forgot since I'm not yeah. looking at the list. Yes, Ollie and I had a lovely pair programming session, and I still need to work on that padding. But. Boom, boom, boom. So we've got a mobile nav, and uh, if you look at it at regular screen, it's regular, and if you look at it at mobile, it's mobile, and it works real nice, and there's a nice idea of and there's an, yeah. so for and there's tutorials. And there's an in-between, the medium width we have scrolling to deal with, the oh, yeah. case. The case where you yeah. kind of want a tablet, but it doesn't seem worth like truncating everything. Yeah, I think so. it's really nice. Yeah, so helping helping all you achieve is OKRs. Had nothing to do with my need for assistance at all. I am selfish to a fault. Yes. Um, da, 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 da. That is everybody. That is a full round of what I done last week, what I'm going to do next week. Well done, everyone. Um, uh, I hope you've, oh, David Diaz, welcome. Your question is valid, please entertain us. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my question is simple. So um, the project working group, uh, like one of the P1s that is on our Waffle board, uh, is getting the working groups on IPFS.io. And I know that the GUI team has been thinking a little bit about that. Uh, do you have any formal update on like what what is your thinking there? Uh, in my, um, yeah, my formal update on that is that I was hoping to work through that with Chris Waring when he starts. Uh, I don't know if you're if you're feeling it's more urgent, then we can make time for it. But if it can wait a couple of weeks, then 
I, that would be kind of a nice, easy thing to get him started on. Awesome. Yeah. But it's totally like it's not super urgent. It's just like we believe to be a high value. And so maybe just like leaving that note on the issue, uh, if you don't mind. Like, or I can do it myself now that I know. That like we will see something in two weeks so that we don't burn cognitive time every week of like looking at that issue and wondering. Yep. I, will, um, I, will, I will add a note to the issue. No worries. Thank you so much. Any other general notes? Has everybody added anything they want to the agenda? Alan has a secret to share. Oh my God, so exciting. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to share my screen real quick because Alan's secret is going to get the headline slot at the end of the session. And in the meantime, I, I mean, it's now knowledge that the GUI team is having some team together time. And I want you to know that this has been hard work. Like Diogo and I didn't sleep till midnight. We've been working hard. I had a crash on his sofa. It was that's not really true. Um, but what we've been mostly focusing on is trying to capture the like, what what are the healthy habits that we need to reinforce over the next year, and what is the list of things that we think are most exciting for us to work on, and that we think the community needs, or we think the community will get behind. So I'm gonna just quickly whiz through that list so that this is its first public outing, and it hasn't really been. Uh, reviewed or sanity checked, but it's a work in progress and it's like the output of our morning session So I wanted to talk through it with with other stakeholders. So we like the things that we think are most exciting uh, I want to see people's faces in case anyone's like freaking out. No, everyone seems pretty happy da -da 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 -da. Okay, yeah, I can see you I see some of you this that annoying thing of you can't actually see them um Desktop we so like things that we think are most exciting that are kind of like in our flight path already uh, desktop OS integration, this is definitely like key, but there's this exciting, like, so um, uh, Hack is already getting the context menu add to IPFS working. And we know that we've got some, like, some general working notes on how we're gonna get uh, mounting your MFS in, as a, uh, using Fuse to mount it into your uh, file system, so your operating system file browser, which we think will just make the whole like process of adding and exploring your repo a lot a lot more intuitive to people who might not want to use a web browser or might not want to use a command line. Like just seeing it in your operating system is clearly like IPFS is getting closer to being ubiquitous. So that's super exciting. The IPFS like scheme handler is a kind of interesting one. Like if you if we can teach operating systems like what to do when it sees a URL that begins with IPFS colon slash slash, that's super exciting. Um, there's some open questions around the desktop integration, like how to add things, but this is more of a design question that we're going to work on outside of this call. Um, so with, with the conversation of like the scheme handler, so like what should an operating system do with an IPFS URL? This led on to talking about the IPFS Explorer. So right now the files view in web UI is limited to the MFS. It's limited to your local mutable view of the repo. But a UX challenge we have today is if you type IPFS add files at the command line and then try and see them in web UI, you can't see them because IPFS add isn't adding things to the to your MFS. So there's this kind of divide. And there's also like a cognitive, like educational challenge of I think over time we're going to want to find like a fundamentally better solution for IPFS but in the meantime we want the web UI to explain that there is a block store with millions of CIDs in and it isn't just the, the subsection of it that you can alias to your MFS so we're imagining a, a level above the root of the MFS that you can get to but uh, like the naive implementation of that would just be like listing out thousands of CIDs, which would be super unfriendly to users. So I'm imagining like the level above the root to to be an onboarding step where it explains like it's it's a much more it like it pretends to be showing you the infinite plane of IPFS CIDs, but actually it's just highlighting some interesting ones. Like it's going to highlight the current uh, CID for the root of your MFS. And somehow visually quite clearly like with you know a little home icon next to it or somehow be like here's a cid that's interesting it's the root of your mfs currently and then like here's the cid for the ipfs readme or some like other like choice ones and then give you access to features like being able to run ipfs get directly from the browser or ipfs cat or something like that um and also it, it then if we have a space for that 
then it's a place where if, if you click on an arbitrary RDFS URL, then it gives us some UI landing place to say, okay, desktop should open the files viewer that just views arbitrary CIDs, because right now the whole thing is arranged around showing you paths within MFS, but if you just paste in a CID link, that's not necessarily even in your local repo, so it gives us a place and a visual, gives us a user flow for showing arbitrary IPFS content. And then we kind of got more excited, so we were like, wait, if we do that, then we're kind of like just a step below building like the IPFS browser. And like at that point, we put a pin in it and we were like, yep, that is kind of, I think what we want to do is start with the educational version, but build it with just being mindful that like ultimately what we're trying to create there is like show you IPFS content and preserve the IPFS address in some visual form. I thought David Diaz might be triggered at that point, so I'm ready for his questions. David Diaz, please share. Uh, so this is really exciting. I, I like the direction where this is going. Uh, I would uh, recommend really reevaluation uh, reevaluate the role of MFS in how it gets presented to the users. Maybe well, I'm conflicting with another conversation that is happening next to me. Although I was here first, um, so <laughs> sorry about that. What I, what I meant to suggest is um, right now there is this like MFS is a world separate from IPFS files. Uh, UI did very well that there is a thing that is a block store and there's a thing that is an MFS. It would be, I think, useful to reconsider um, like MFS spinning uh, as a whole and to also add to the mix the file store. So today, when a user pulls a file from my IPFS, it gets into this IPFS repo. Um, and then if the user wants to consume the file in some program, it has to pull it from the repo to like the desktop folder, download folder, whatever, which means that now there's a duplicate file. If the user makes a change to that file, now that user has to edit the MFS again. And so it might be super uh, convenient for users to have like an MFS path mounted or like just watching some local folder, the same way that we have the downloads folder. Or if you are familiar with Torrent clients, like the Torrent client always has a folder where it looks first for files. And so it could be the like the MFS root slash something, like IPFS folder that appears on the user's downloads folder. And so if a user drags and drops a file there, it gets automatically like listed. Well, like accessible to IPFS, but it doesn't get duplicated. Like it doesn't get copied to the repo using the file store. Uh, is everyone familiar with the file store, or did I just like throw some new term around? <laughs> that uh, it's, not so, it's not so much file store. I'm interested in what are we are we saying? Like setting up some way of watching an an OS level directory and mirroring it to IPFS. Yeah. So file store does that, right? Like so file store, you can say, Hey, uh, I have this, uh, this folder already, or like this, um, network attached storage, this NAS, uh, with a terabyte of files. And I don't want to copy them to my local machines repo because then I would have to have one terabyte plus one terabyte and all of the overhead of like storing all the intermediary nodes. And so what the file store feature does in YBFS is just goes through the terabyte, creates the, the or gets the CIDs, creates the, 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 the metadata, and then stores that. And then it knows, okay, if someone is looking for the CID, I need to look into that folder on that NAS box. Um, and, and this way, like you, you don't duplicate the information. That's I, much clearer now. That's the, the fact that we can plug out different implementations of the block store. And one of them is like files, like don't store this in the block store, like reference it from the file system. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and, and so for a user, it's just like convenient and familiar. Like anyone that is familiar with a Dropbox a app or a Google Drive, they know if they install the app, there is now this folder that just magical. If I drag and drop, it appears on my Google Drive, it appears on my Dropbox. Uh, the same way, if I download the torrent, I know that it's on this folder. If I remove it from here, now it, it doesn't get shared on torrents anymore. Uh, so, so I think that pattern, although not necessarily the most obvious one, is the one that users are most familiar with nowadays. Uh, and there is something that would help us also to avoid duplicating all the information all the time, um, which is something that happens uh, using just like add and, and get commands, right? You, you both add it to the repo and you both add it to some other place on your file system. 
Yeah, very true. I think I'm going to need to unpack what I think I've understood from that on an issue and then page you to see if you can add some more details. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. Cool. Um, other things that we knew were exciting. So the hosting websites, a good clear story for hosting websites and an app to support it, like hosting and updating and that the, the, like it's easy to host websites on IPFS. What's not easy right now is uh, HTTPS domain fallback, uh, DNS link updating, the whole story. If you want to actually have like a really good website on IPFS with HTTPS and a fallback domain, the, like the certificate works, and but you still want like to rely on peers to host it and the central gateway to deal with people who don't have IPFS installed. That's still currently quite difficult. So, but what I kind of surfaced when we had this conversation was every time this conversation comes up, like it's exciting, but there's so many variables and opinions about how to do websites well that I think we are going to focus on this, but we're going to push it to at least Q2 and spend some time this quarter pinning down some of the variables. Um, some of the unknowns, some of the user flows that we're talking about. It's, it's, I think it's quite a clear project, but it's like, where should we divide this? What I want to spend a little bit of time focusing on. And I want to do that as a background task this quarter so that we don't just like, I think to do it well, we're going to have to, as a team, focus on it pretty solidly for a whole quarter. So I'm not going to focus on that this quarter. I'm not going to ask the team to spend much energy on that, but I think in the background, we need to be working on an issue where we start to talk to stakeholders and users who have a vested interest in doing this and get clear about what it really means. Exciting, but unfortunately pause for a few quarters. Uh, and a much easier win is to bundle up all the work we've done already as something that we're sort of referring to as create IPFS app. So essentially just a fork of create React app that includes JS IPFS, that includes our IPFS Redux bundle that knows how to find the best available IPFS in your pile and IPFS CSS and has a shiny uh, initial, like it scaffolds out a shiny landing page that's like JS IPFS is running and connected to N peers and just a very like, it's not, a, it's not a star trap, it's like a command line that gives you scaffolding that you then fork and take off and start building your app from. Um, and it's just a way of, for us, it's a way of putting a more like user facing product on our work that we're going to be doing to create the component library and make better documentation around the style guides and stuff like that, that, that we can also incorporate them all into this uh, app scaffolding tool. Um, and we think that's, you know, that's actually quite a small, but a small chunk of work that will release quite major like excitement and already useful. Like I know that um, the DDC are generating demo apps all the time and I've seen Pedro run create act react app and then have to import a bunch of things to get started so like immediately i've got a i've got a user um i see a question from david dia uh this always is full of like really awesome ideas and and that's like intuitively uh, i think like they will create a lot of value uh the the thing i want to bring up is it also like seems like it is a long list of ideas with a lot of work behind uh it and so one of the things that i have suggested to other working groups is to uh use the ipfs conf like the big event that they're coming uh, that is coming this year as kind of like a, a prioritization function like um if ipfs conf were to happen um tomorrow, like what would be the messages? Like what would be the things that you want to communicate to the whole community? Fortunately, it's not tomorrow. You actually have like five and a half months. And so what are the things that you want to polish, finish, do, create that um, when uh, broadcasted in that channel, that venue uh, will then enable more people to build apps with IPFS or like more contributors to, to join the grid team, etc. cetera. Um, so so um, what I'm say essentially saying is, Consider very carefully the amount of time that you have available till then, and, and, and perhaps make the hard decision of like focusing on a few things really, really hard, and like pausing others just for the sake of using that moment as like a, a moment to define a new baseline for the entire community. Like here's the the things that you can trust and count on. Um, Absolutely, that's uh, yes. The the mid year <laughs> specter of IPFS comp is definitely it's a good uh, for, forcing function. It's like do do the things that are going to generate a good like solid base for us to go forwards on. <gasps> Question: Terry Chapel. 
please. Statement. Speaking of IPFSCon, if you have workshop content you're building, is any of it appropriate to build in Proto School format? The end. Absolutely. You will be pleased to know that towards the bottom of this list in the healthy habits section, we've got uh, part of like discussing component libraries and extracting and polishing up what we've already done. You'll see that extract, test, and where possible, create a Proto School tutorial. Pew, 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 pew. Um, just so I don't want to take up too much time, we're running now, and I want time for questions if there are any. Um, Bidirectional file sharing is an idea that Lidl reminded us of, has been around for a while now, and we've got demos of it. It's functionality that's totally supported. We've got the share.idfs.io site. Um, we plan to do work on it to have some decent infrastructure around it so that it has a really good quality of service. This is like the idea of as David said, like what are the things that we can do some work on before the middle of the year that leaves us with like just a better ecosystem. And I think making sure that we've got a clear pattern of how to support a good decentralized sharing service that has just the few bits of interchangeable infrastructure that will make the experience better and explaining why those infrastructure pieces exist and how you might run your own is key. And then once we've got that, if there's time left and available people, then that would be the app where we might talk about like, okay, so in default, you drop files, you share a link with someone and they can get the snapshot of the files. But it'd be nice to have a big toggle switch that's like enable collaborative playlist. And, and then it's like, it's not just a snapshot of files. It's like you are creating a, uh, a space for whoever, whoever you share the link with to be able to add additional files to it. So it's like you have your, your big party, you have your wedding, and then you share a link with people say, like, add your files to this website. And it's just bing, 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 community, community generated link, uh, shared file space. We think that'd be cool. Da, 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 da. Healthy habits. Well, fundamentally, we want to encourage more open source contributors. We think this project is really cool. And I'm surprised that we're not fending off all kinds of internet folks who are just like throwing ideas at us and offering to change the code base in arbitrary ways or provide really good, useful improvements, features and fixes. Um, so we can clearly be doing something more to be improving that. And so like one thing that we were talking about before, this is like this call uh, isn't really about project management. This call is like surfacing for the community and for other working groups, what we've most, the most interesting thing we've been working on and what the most interesting thing we're gonna be working on next. Like as a, more as a like, a call out to the to the community to say like over the next week we're going to be focusing on this so if you have opinions and care about this subject like here's how you get involved uh and it isn't supposed to be like the project management system like i think i just need to get better at that out out of band like we shouldn't have to have a weekly school to do project management which means just it's simpler things like waffle boards and prioritize lists like project management ultimately boils down to like knowing what the tasks are and what their priority is. And we shouldn't need to use the weekly call for that. The weekly call can be a much more like welcoming, hey, here's what's going on. Um, so I hope that you felt like the call today has been that. Um, question from Terry Chadbrook. Uh I wanted to point out that there's been a suggestion for Proto School that we add a closing page to each tutorial that's like a next step. So if optional, like you want to learn more about this thing, go here. You want to contribute to something using the skill you just learned, go here. So if you're looking for more contributors to this kind of stuff, we should think about if there's anything you want to surface in those. I will paste the link to that issue in case you have ideas on that. Hop in. That is super helpful. Um, could you add that to the, uh, the document as well? Thank you very much, but that's a great idea. Um, other healthy habits, uh, this just having one day together. I mean, we've only essentially had half a day together and it surfaced a bunch of stuff really quickly. Whereas in previous quarters, it's kind of felt like the OKR discussions have taken a long time and they've been fruitful, but it was slow going and felt like admin, whereas doing it in person has felt fun and the list we kind of really believe in. And we've got a lot of nuance very quickly about why we think things are important and we've bounced ideas off each other in a way that hasn't happened as naturally previously. So I haven't run this past David Diaz yet, but uh, there's a proposal that the Nui team would like to meet for like one to two days around each OKR boundary. 
Um, and we're kind of talking about Porto or Lisbon being quite a useful middle ground, although that has sort of ignored the fact that Lidl lives in Poland, so we kind of need to think about that. Um, but there is certainly a gravity well of uh, people here. And I think Chris Waring is talking about moving in that direction. So it's all very exciting. Uh, there is something in the chat there. Uh, David Diaz, did you want to say anything? Or is that I think that's a great idea. I, I love it. Like, uh, I think Hack Week's research intensive, just get together, uh, yeah. going to conferences together, are like one of our most powerful techniques techniques mm. to like do meme transfer and just like increase the shared understanding. Like, so far, there hasn't been any proposal that has been blocked of like people meeting uh, or going to a conference. And, and so I always encourage all the working groups to leverage that more, to use that more. Uh, maybe sometimes it's Porto, maybe sometimes it's Lisbon. <laughs> I believe Chris will actually move into my house for a while. So <laughs> like you can find him there. Uh, and <laughs> Uh, but like sometimes it might be some conference if you want to go and like meet some specific community. Yeah, like it is it is totally fine, totally fair, and and I agree it's something very very healthy uh, for people to like to meet each other, catch up, have fun, uh, think about new ideas, get to meet new um, potential collaborators or just users. Yeah, go for it. Like the, there is no no blockers. Boom. Okay, <laughs> that uh, it has certainly felt really positive. Um, thank you for support in that matter. Um, next up, uh, Create Component Library, talking about for ages, kind of know what we're doing, certainly going to cue Chris Waring up for some of that thinking as well. Um, but the key part was also wherever it's uh, something more of the plumbing of how you say add files in the browser to a thing, like we should just be like, it seems silly to do all the work to understand how to do it and then not to like just bake it and just put some words top and bottom and be like, here's the code sample that we think best represents how in a browser today you can add a directory by drag and drop. And that could be a pro school tutorial or at least some kind of some guide that hangs off pro school. Things like that. Um, and the thing that has been unanimously positive is like I've only done two sessions, but the pairing is going well. And uh, but what is what's happening and what I don't yet see some stuff from Terry, what's happening is I'm, I'm sort of passively learning what people are working on as well. And I think that's really useful because, you know, we can do these calls and like listen in, but like helping someone with a specific problem, it's like, there's no, nothing compares for like getting that level of understanding about what someone's working on. Just like having that deep dive with someone to like get a thing fixed. Um, and I think it'll just, I, what I'm going to, so it's part of the GUI team's um, OKRs for this quarter, and I intend to keep it part of the GUI team's. What I hope to do is keep telling everyone that it's great so that other teams think about deliberately making time for it in their OKRs, because for, for people like Terry, like, she's a good person, and she doesn't want to take up too much of other people's time. And there's a definitely, like, a human social thing that if people don't officially make time for a thing, then it feels like too much of an ask. Like, you don't want to tread on anyone's toes. So that's that's going well and and definitely like for the GUI team it has a very positive like it's not purely a generous act like we also want to teach people how we make user interfaces so that we spend less time fixing bugs in other people's user interfaces that are done in a totally different way we want to share the memes of of how we go about things but we also want to figure out what's missing from our pile of resources that would be beneficial to the organization as a whole Terry Chadwell. Two quick questions. One is, where do you want me to go to ask for pair programming help? Is there a procedure I'm supposed to be following? I just like dumped it in lobby because I had no idea. This is the killer question. Like, yeah, I mean, it's the, the cobbler's shoes. We spend all our time making web apps and user interfaces and there's no simple like request a thing. But I think it's like there might be a repo with issues on so we can at least track how many we've done and write up some notes about what happened just to like capture it for other groups to see. Um, but it's TBC, but I want to create, okay. a, I want to create a process for it that's, that's visible to the organization and somewhere we can kind of capture the learnings that come out of them. Okay, and then question slash offer. Would anyone like to watch me in real time try to teach myself the file API using the contents of your websites? 
feel free to say no. But. I say, uh, maybe you could ask or the question. I can again. just tell you, I can just share the questions later. That's fine. It's um, uh, the offer of watching you in real time. Do Wait, is Alan, is that, for, is that giant yes for me? Yeah, it looks like a giant yes from Alan. Yeah. He loves okay. watching people program. All right, I will, I will be in touch, Alan, when I'm to, ready to start thinking about doing that. To clarify for folks with maybe a little less context on this call, I think what you're saying is pair programming, not creepy watching. No, I'm not talking about pair programming. I'm talking, talking about, about, talking about no, you know, like when you asked me to do the UI test and like oh, of course. X product. So I'm going to have to use something you guys have created to learn about the file API. So if you want to watch me use whatever teaching materials you've already created to learn enough to create my tutorial. A usability test. That would be amazing. Yes. Yes. Oh, have you changed your mind now, Molly? Uh, it's just that I have a clearer understanding of what you're offering. Okay. But Alan's already said yes. Alan, is that what you thought I meant already? Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay. And it's cool. relevant to me because if you're using the files API and you don't understand it, then it needs to be better. Okay, <laughs> okay. sounds good. Nice. All right, folks, I need to jump to the next uh, session. But oh, yeah. it was really great. Thank you so much for this call. That's okay. We're over. We're over time. We're over time as well. So unless there's any burning questions, I think we're going to wrap it up. What's Alan's secret? Oh my God, Alan's got a secret. Okay, bye, David. You don't get to hear. See you. Have a nice meeting. What? Alan, Alan share, share your secret. Okay. Oh, right. quickly. Uh, you need to unshare. Right. Okay. Share this. Oh, share not that. Here we go. There you go. Uh, so Hugo has done loads of good work uh, and uh, it's not even finished yet, but uh, the latest release of IPFS HTTV client, which has some of the good uh, bundle size PRs in, in it, is like 27% smaller than the previous version I'm talking about. Uh, yeah, one of these. Anyway, it's super small now. And exactly the same thing for uh, I, the next release of IPFS, 0.34, is 20% smaller already. Pew, pew, pew. It's not even finished all of the work. Um, and so when that's all done, I'll make a big song and dance about it. Uh, and probably it'll probably be go out in the release notes for the next release. But yeah, just to say thanks, Hugo, Mr. Diaz. Uh, you've done an amazing job. And I can see the, I can see the rewards already. Oh, boo, 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 boo. Hugo, Mr. DS, he's so fancy. I love it. Um, all right. Unless there's any other business, it's five minutes past. I'm going to let you get on with your other business. This has been the weekly in web browsers and GUI team sync call. See you at the same time, same place next week. Bye.